uh, you know, forgive the electronic stuff, but if you have like your Bible Bible, can you hold it up? Right? Oh, yeah, great. Right so I would encourage everybody, because this message really is about the Word of God today, and it's different things about God's Word and uh, just the power of it. And I'm going to divide it up in like three sections. I'm going to go kind of quick. So if you've got to take notes, or I'm, I got notes for you too in your bullet, and I know we probably have more, but if you need them. But I, I want to go through this r- rather kind of quickly, because I really want to get to something towards the end here. But um, if you have your Bible, that's great. I want to pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. I think how powerful it is. I thank you for its life changing, its spirit changing, its destination changing. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in this, uh, in this church body and in the church body, even in our community and in the world. Lord, I thank you for your word because it is everything. And I just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Since the beginning of Rocket Life, especially the beginning of this year, we keep focusing on the word of God. It is amazing. It is so powerful. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 says that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, right? In this world where everything is fake and false, blah, 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 the word says this is true, right? And it makes us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work, right? That's powerful. Now, I talk to a lot of people, um, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's frustrating at times um, when I talk to people and they say, you know, I just can't trust the Word of God. I don't believe it. It's written by men. It's been translated so many thousands of times. Um, and they'll say, you know, uh, you just can't trust it. You can't prove it. You know, God doesn't come down to, from the clouds like right now every day and say, hey, I'm God. I'm here. Believe in me. Uh, believe in my Word. Uh, so people want to see this absolute proof of God's word, but the Bible is true whether we believe it or not. Amen. Amen? The word of God has been proven to be true over and over and over. You can trust it. It has been proven. You can rely on it. I'd love to go into detail, but that's like a different Bible study I want to do. I'm planning these one-off Bible studies, just like subject Bible studies to be announced in the new year, which is only like, what, a couple of months? All right. So, but the word of God has been proven to be true over and over and over again. Uh, God's word never contradicts itself. It proves itself. It's 100% accuracy on prophecies. I think the last time I saw it was like 1,817 prophecies have been true, uh, you know, proven to be true and come to fruition. Uh, Archaeological discoveries time and time again confirm the written history of the Bible. There is enough non-biblical history, historical writings that back up what the Bible records. As a matter of fact, even without the Bible, with the writings of different uh, historians like Josephus and uh, Josephus Flavius and, and Tacitus, um, you, can, you can see the gospel. They basically explain the gospel. Um, the bottom line is God's word, God's word is true. Whether anyone believes it or not, I know I'm going fast. But you guys all agree, amen? Yeah. Amen. If you don't, by the end of this, you'll be going, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> now, the thing about it is every person has the free will to believe this or not. They just do. And I talked to enough people that it is, it is kind of tough, like we talked last week, uh, it's kind of tough to be sitting in front of somebody and basically have them look at you and say, I just don't believe in the Word of God. I just don't believe God. It's always heartbreaking for me. But uh, it's really amazing when I'm sitting down to some, with somebody and they say, well, yes, I do believe. Um, 1 Corinthians 1.18, like we said last week, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it's the very power of God, right? So the, the, the message of the cross is, is Jesus, right? And Jesus is the word. So we're talking about the word of God here. So I, I pray that, I sincerely pray that everybody comes to realize the truth of the gospel. It's heartbreaking. And I've been dealing with this the last couple of weeks. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, two young men have bas- well, basically have said, they, they choose to serve uh, Satan. And that's, that's really difficult. Man, I talk to them and I say, hey, it's, it's a, there's a Satan there, but he's not the one you should be serving. See, when we pray and share the good news, the Holy Spirit goes to work. And you can see it. I mean, the last, I think it's like four months now, we've had six people say, yes, I'm in. I, I, I acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior. I, 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 I want to be in heaven forever. Forgive me. I, you've seen... And we've had, what, we had five baptisms in a row, 12 people either rededicating themselves and, and being baptized. That's amazing. See, that's the power of God, right? People see the power of God 
to salvation. But if not, 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4 says, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, like we talked about a couple weeks ago. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. All you have to do is watch any movie nowadays, right? You know, flip on the news or just pay attention to what's going, around, going on around us. And like we talked about again, the last few messages I think have been really powerful. There's decisions to be made here. Two big decisions. One, if you're an unbeliever, who are you going to serve? Right? There's only two choices. You serve God or you don't. And if you're a believer, the choice is how serious I am. How serious am I about my relationship with Christ? Am I a little bit in, kind of halfway in, or am I all in? Am I like hot or am I cold or just lukewarm? The decision nowadays is do we have enough, and I'm trying to say this the right way because I was on a radio program with John this last week. Are we just as dedicated to our faith in God as the unbelievers are dedicated to their unbelief? Because that's what's happening. People are just going, no, I don't want God. And if they're not even saying it that exact, they're just saying, you know what, I don't really care. It is what it is, whatever it is. 2 Peter 3, 9, 12 says, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not, anyone, does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. That I don't even want to think about what that terrible noise sounds like. And the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live, right? That's the decision for us believers. How serious are we about our faith? Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along, on that day he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. How do we as Christians, and this is an, an interactive question, so feel free to shout out. How are we as Christians able to hurry it along? Bingo. Telling others. Like we said last week, we were supposed to preach that foolish message. That's what we're to do. With that set up, that was kind of the preaching part. Now I'll give you the teaching part, okay? This is kind of a teaching morning. Um, we've done teaching in the past, but with all that's going on in the world right now, and the truth of God's word being completely denied, and everybody saying, this is my truth, my truth, and you can't tell me my truth is wrong, it, it's, okay, well, there's only one truth. Now, have you guys heard of the acronym B-I-B-L-E, right? Basic instructions before leaving earth, right? Great. So before I start getting into this deeper, I, I just want to tell you, oh, that's good. It's up there. I forgot. So this is how the Word of God has been titled in the Word of God. This is how God describes His Word, right? In Deuteronomy 31, 26, it's the book of law. There you go. And uh, it's the good news, of, it's the gospel in Romans. The Holy Scriptures, it's described in Romans 1-2. The law of the Lord in Psalm. The living words in Acts. The message of Christ in Colossians. It's the Scriptures in 2 Timothy. The scroll in Psalm 40. It's called the truth in John 17. The word of God in Luke. The word of life in Philippians. And the word of the Lord in Psalm. That's the word of God. Now, what is the Word of God about? I know this sounds kind of like elementary, but hey, if somebody out there right now is sitting here and they don't know the Word of God or they don't know salvation, they don't know, they don't have faith in Jesus, this is how basically if there was one sentence to describe God's Word, it would be this. People have continually rejected God but can reconcile with Father God by placing our faith in and accepting His Son, Jesus, the Savior, and be filled with the Holy Spirit when we repent and are saved by Christ's life, death, on the cross, and his resurrection, right? It's a long sentence, but that's it. It's about reconciling and reconnecting with Father God, who we have been rejecting since day one. And the word says God, like we said, God doesn't want one person to perish. 
not one. His will is that everyone would come to repentance and be saved. And one time I talked about how as a father, right, I, I love my kids. And, you know, my dad's the same way, my mom's the same way. But, but, like, my dad wanted everybody in one big, you know, parcel of land and house here, house there, house. And everybody's there just, you know, you could get up in the morning, meet in the middle, and everybody's happy, right? So he wanted that. And I, I was trying to explain to somebody about how Father God loves us. And if anybody's a parent here, you love your kids. You just want them with you. You want them with you. And that's Father God. He, he just loves us so much. He just wants us with him forever. That's what he wants. He just wants his kids with him forever. And he tells us the way to get there. It's through his son, Jesus. So here's where you take notes. All right. Um, that's all the prep work. Here's the core of the message. So what does God ask us to do in his word? In other words, like, how do we even read God's word? See, we are to meditate on it, remember it, trust it. We're to hope in the Word of God. We're to pray the Word of God. We're to follow it and apply it, put His Word into action into our lives. We wield the, the Word of God in our, in our lives. It's the sword that we would wield. See, if there's anything that's going to make a difference in our lives, if there's anything that's going to fix relationships and restore if there's anything that's going to get us on that track that God wants us to be, to walk in our purpose and the calling, if there's anything that's going to get us through the tough times and the trials and, and the, even the victories and the successes and, and the good times and the wonderful times, it's going to be when we are in the Word of God. That's just the way it is. And I know we all struggle. It's sometimes it's hard. We're so busy or, or we, maybe we don't understand or there's a certain, certain part in our life that we're struggling with that keeps us out of the Word of God. But we all need, more than ever before, with everything that's going on in this world, if we're not in the Word of God, when we're in the situation where God wants us to be, we're going to be unprepared. If, what people said back there a while ago, if we are to share the gospel. It's very difficult to be an expert or something, to share something when you don't have enough knowledge about it. And if there's one thing we need to be knowledgeable about, it is the Word of God. All right. Most times pastors and other people um, would say, if you ask them, well, where do I start? Where do I start? Once in a great while, somebody will come up to me after service and say, yeah, you said to read the Word of God, but I don't know where to start. You know, I, and you may be in a certain situation in your life, a certain point in your life, and you look at the Bible, and, and you look at this, and you go, I just, I don't know where to start. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Where do we start? Like most pastors would probably say, and I said, well, okay, just start in, start in the Gospels. You know, start with Matthew, Luke, and John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and get to know Jesus. That's a good answer. But sometimes that can still be a little big, a little overwhelming. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through this. So we understand how God describes the Word of God. So now we understand His value, and we know His power, and the need for it. What's the need for the Word of God? I don't want to go to hell. I don't want my friends and family to go to hell. I don't want eternal separation from God. This world isn't it. This world offers us nothing. Look around. Pain, devastation, uh, a life without serving God leads to destruction. That's what God says, and it's true. People that can no longer find peace anymore, they look in the, in the world and drugs, and they look for sex. They look for you know, a power, position, profit. I think Matthew Perry died yesterday from friends. Really sad, by himself, in the hot tub, had a heart attack. He's never got married, never had kids. And I was, we were looking at it yesterday. It's really sad. And I, and I think, wow, what an unfulfilled life. Never served the Lord, never talked about the God. Now, I don't know what happened in those few moments, and I would pray. In those few moments, he was like in a flash. I, I pray that there was a moment where he said, oh, man, Jesus, you know, all those things I've heard. Yes, Lord, something's going on. Receive me. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I pray that that happened. And you don't know, right? You pray for that. But by the fruit of his life, it was an unfulfilled life. There's a need for the word of God. Bible verses that describe the importance of his word for our lives. Once again, 1 Corinthians 1.18, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. Once again, the key verse that I want us to focus on today is 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. 
all scripture is inspired by God is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Ephesians 6.17, we talk about wielding the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In the armor of God, everybody says it's the only offensive weapon. It is. The word says that. We can defend against any attack of the enemy, and we can hit with the truth of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. If we're struggling with something, if we got thoughts we don't want to deal with, if we've, we're struggling in our mind, open the word of God. It cuts through all that stuff. It exposes it. What the word does in our lives, we, we will know Jesus because Jesus is the living word of God. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word. Jesus, and, and John 8.31 and 32, and I know I'm going quick, so I'm trying to get to something. You guys okay? You guys with me so far? Okay, nobody's lacking behind. If you want me to slow down, hang on. I won't. <laughs> so, <laughs> then Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, if you abide in my Word, you are my disciples indeed. You will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus was saying to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, people will know you're my disciples. People will know you because of your fruit. If you obey my commandments, if you love God, obey my commandments. That's the power of the word of God. It restores, it heals, it saves. We are to start valuing God's word over the ways of the world. I'm, I'm sick of the ways of the world. More than ever before, I'm just sick of it. The disgust and the filth and everything that's happening right now, that's the stuff they're throwing on our kids, and the fights, and the divisions. And aren't you just sick of it? Yeah. Tired of it. And if we're going to make a difference the way the Word says, we need to know the Word of God. We need to be prayed up. We need to have the Word ready to be spoken out of our lives. We need to show the way the Word is and the way that we act, the way we treat others, the way we love. I'm tired of unforgiveness. I'm tired of offenses. I'm tired of Satan pushing people around. I'm sick and tired that they have a Satan club in schools. I hate that. I hate that things have been so corrupted in cartoons and movies and schools. It's just everything is yuck. We need to be people of integrity and we need to show ourselves different than the world. And the way we do that is by being in the word. Psalm 119.18. One of my, it's my favorite psalm of all. Psalm 119 is so uplifting. It says, joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil. They walk only in his paths. You have charges to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. Just a couple lines down. Psalm 119.11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You want to battle sin? Have the word in your heart. That's the way it is. You want to help lead somebody to Christ? You want to sow some seed? You want to water? Throw a little fertilizer? A lot of fertilizer? <laughs> You want to be part of the reap and the harvest? You can't do that without the word of God being right here, ready to be spoken by the word of your testimony and the things that you've gone through, that you can tell people, I was this and now I'm that. And it's Jesus that changed me. Psalm 119, 101, 105, and we continue just a little bit more. It says, I have refused to walk on any evil path so that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I've had at least two people this week basically tell me that they're serving Satan. That they choose the things. I, I don't want anything to do with this anymore. I'm tired of the fact that people think that Satan in this world has anything to offer us. It 
doesn't. And this word says, I refuse to walk on any evil path. And this is a bit of a, a, bit of a bunny trail, but cleanse your house. Cleanse your house. If you're a parent and you got kids with horrible video games and horrible music and posters and a hint of evil or a satanic Bible or any type of filth, get rid of it because darkness can't exist where there's light. Do you serve the Lord or not? Do our houses serve the Lord or not? Am I willing to stand against a family member or friend and go, no, this is not acceptable. As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. I'm tired of people being deceived by Satan. Finally, I'm not done yet. This is just about the word. The being in the word of God grows our faith. Romans 10, 17 says. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you guys getting a theme here? It's all about what? The word of God. All right. John 14, 26 says, I don't have the best memory. I'm not really great with names. Although I can say the word like crazy, sometimes I don't remember the verse, the chapter, the page, you know, the font, or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but see, John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all these things and bring to remembrance all things that I have said to you. So you have this Holy Spirit in you that basically, if you're talking about, oh, yeah, what's that Bible verse? And it comes to remembrance. It wasn't exactly you. It's that Holy Spirit, when you store the word up in your heart, he helps you to remember it. All right, so here's the action part. Here's where you guys get involved here. Don't be afraid to raise your hand and speak up when I ask you, okay? Promise? Okay. So here's the part where you guys get involved. A lot of people ask me, where do I start? Even people who have been Christians for a while will sometimes go, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I, I've got my Bible, but I'm struggling with it. I prayed about this. I'm really going to give you guys some, some, what the Word says, but also from experience, how we can all be, go deeper into the Word and how we can all be more um, capable of digging into the Word even deeper. One of the biggest questions I get, question number one I get is, what Bible? What Bible do I read? I prefer, personally... And this is from investigation and reading other people and scholars. I prefer the New King James. Um, that's just, it's, it's just the one I trust. It's the one I look at. Everybody seems to be, this is the one that that's, it was translated. I'm okay with it. If I want something more contemporary, the New Living Translation. The Amplified is very close to original Hebrew because some of these words have different meanings and go a lot deeper than just a basic translation. There's extra, extra explanation in the Amplified that gives us a, a little better definition of the original meaning of the pertinent words, right? There's other, I'm not saying that these are the only ones, but these are the ones I personally prefer. ESV is pretty close. I like that one too. But like I said, other than that, I, I pretty much stick with this. Now, if you want to know what Bible I carry, I carry the Nelson New King James Spirit-Filled Study Bible. I would ask everyone here, and I'll say this a bit later in the explanation, get a study Bible. Get a study Bible. There's footnotes and glossaries and original definitions. There's Hebrew and Greek, concordance maps. I know some of you guys who use electronic. I'm not putting down electronic. I, my phone, my iPad, my computer, everything has you know, the Bible Hub and Bible Gateway and different translations of the Bible. Our app, if you go to Tithely on your, on your cell phone, you know, whether it's the Google Play Store or the Apple, whatever that's called. <laughs> you get, download a Bible, okay? The U version, because you have all these different versions, okay? But you've got to get a study Bible. It's just, just what you got to use. Concordance and maps and commentary. There's context on the culture. Like, the one that I carry, there's like, there's like three pages of explanation before you even get to that book. Hey, here's what was going on. Here's, here's, the, here's the time. Here's what was the culture. You know, here was the, 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 all the things I say. Hang on a second. Here's the outline. Um, here's the author, the date, the content. Here's your personal application. Here's how Christ is revealed. Here's how the Holy Spirit is at work. You know, here's the timing. It's all these things. Study the Bible. Study the Word. Know the context. I would say, get a study Bible. And here's the other important thing. 
write in it. Get highlighters, markers, little post-it notes. Make notes, remembrances. And if you go, well, it's such a beautiful Bible. I just, I hate to ruin it. Then what I, Pastor Mike in Jubilee used to say, okay, then what you do with that Bible is you put it on a pedestal, put a glass cover over it, look at it when you want to, and then go buy a Bible that you can write in. One that you can highlight, right? Mess it up. By the way, I'll take another quick bunny trail. Um, after our house burned down in the fire, I probably lost, I think I lost a Bible when I was a kid. I, you know, there's a red letter, Jesus, you know, King James Version. And um, that burned, everything burned. And um, uh, the Bible that I had was this Bible, uh, and that burned too. And um, as we were running out of the house, um, on the counter was my dad's Bible. And I bought, I, I, I bought my dad this Bible like 20 years ago because so I fell in love with this Bible. So I sent it to him. And this is my dad's Bible. It says Alfred G. Romero on it. I had it in Gabe. And I'm Alfred A. Romero. He's Alfred G. Romero. And inside is the little letter that I wrote him that I stuck in the Bible when I mailed it to him. He lived in Hawaii at the time. So this is my dad's Bible. So it's really cool. There's little notes and things. And I don't know what this means, but my dad has rose petals in here. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but, but it's really cool. But this is my dad's Bible. So I, I love this Bible. Um, now, uh, the other thing I would tell you is get a concordance, right, online or paper. I love the paper. There's something about, you know, something about the Bible, right? You know, take your, take your phone. Like, yeah, okay. But this, ah, I feel like. Okay, so I like that. Okay, so, but, okay, this, that's concordance, but get one. Okay, um, and the reason why is because there's, there's topical things in it, uh, and you can look up different uh, titles and topics of stuff you're looking for. Now, here's the other thing. The second thing people ask me is, how much do I read? All right, a brief devotion, that's a great way to start the day. We've, Rod always says, I got my U version. I, you open it up, you look at your phone, the first thing you should have on your page is a little devotion. The devotion of the day is a great way to start your day, but that's not your study time. Okay? You can read a few lines, you can pray about it. Great way to start your day. Tie the first part of your day. Then a paragraph, maybe a chapter. But the important thing is about the, the, the quality, not the quantity. It's about context, right? If you read like just a line and you meditate on that, Lord, your word is sweeter than honey. I, 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 I will follow all your precepts and you're on that. And that's what, okay, then that's fine. But if you have to read a paragraph, a chapter, it's wherever you feel comfortable, right? It's very important to read the verse and take into account the whole context. So don't just read a line. Sometimes read the, the paragraph before it and the paragraph after it. And if you've got a study Bible, then you can really understand exactly what's going on. You guys with me? Yeah. Sweet. I love this. This is fun. So now number three, some people will say, well, you know, where do I go? How can, I need help. I, it's difficult. Okay, if you can't read, there's, there's John, what do you do? Bible on YouTube. Oh, yeah, Bible on YouTube. Yeah, you. Bible on YouTube. Bible on YouTube. Um, so there's difficulties reading for some reason. Bible on YouTube. Yeah, there's Bible in a year. There's study plans. Use, use, uh, you know, use your web search. And use your phones. Download a good app if you need to. Reputable websites, right? Uh, make sure sometimes you've got to read who's the sponsor of this website because sometimes it's, you know, it's not good. Okay. Uh, Topical themes, connecting about salvation, healing. So if you're struggling with something and you want to look up a theme, you know, go to like Bible Hub or you could go to um, uh, Jesus Calling or you can go to uh, YouVersion and you could type in, like, I'm really struggling with anger. So you, you type in, you know, uh, righteous anger and all of a sudden all of these Bible verses will come to you. Use the Word of God, right? Use it. From start to finish, Genesis to Revelation, you can read that too. John's not here today, I don't think. But uh, John Stephenson, that's how he came to the Lord. Big reader, read thousands of books. He was 40-something years old and says, you know, I think I'll read the Bible. Not a believer. Reads it one time, really, took him a year, from front to, you know, first line to the last line. And he says, wow, I think I need to read that again. Read it a second time. By the end of it, he said, I'm in. I'm in. I believe. I believe. Uh, would have been great the first time, but thank God he did it the second time. Okay. Now, where was I? Oh, I'm getting there. Okay. So I talked to different people, different points of view. People are searching for truth and life. So, so here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to break this down. 
The people that will come up to me are at different stages in their walk with Christ. Some people don't have a relationship with Jesus. They don't get it. They don't understand it. They're confused. Or maybe they're just kind of like, well, I don't know. Okay. So a person who does not have faith yet, but generally seeking for answers to life, like how did I get here? What's my purpose? What happens after I die? Obviously, I can point to John 3.16. Right? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in it should not perish, but have everlasting life. I can, I can show Romans 10.8.10. 10. 10, 10. 8, 10. But what does it say? The word is, is, is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's where we get the salvation prayer from. But it's not just words. The key word there, in your heart, right? All right, it's not just words. You have to feel it, mean it. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth the confession is made unto salvation. Right? It's a connection. So they will usually ask, well, how do I get to know Jesus? I will say, read the book of John. Read the book of John and then Matthew. You know how much the Father of God loves you, how Jesus teaches us, how we build a relationship with Jesus, and most importantly, how Jesus died for you. So I would say the book of John. Now, if a person is a new believer, and like if you're out there and you're a believer within the last few months or so, I would say just read the Gospels. If you're a new believer, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then go to Acts and Romans and Acts and then Romans. It's a great way to start. If a person has a relationship with God but looking for like a rededication, then I suggest Ephesians, Galatians, Psalms, and Proverbs. A mixture of Old Testament and New Testament. Ephesians breaks down like the roles that God has given us and it talks about the armor of God and if you get for a rededication, you need something to, to make you understand we're in a fight and you strengthen you, go to Ephesians. And if you need a list, my favorite book is Galatians. I don't know what to stay away from. I have no idea what's wrong. I have no idea what's right. Jeez, I'm so naive. Okay, no. Galatians says, if you walk in the world, you're going to have unrighteous anger and lust and sexual morality and, and fits of wrath and jealousies and all this the whole big list. And the other side it says, but if you walk in the Spirit, anybody recite all nine? You get love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and you guys are on it. Okay. Now, if a person's looking to grow their relationship with God, you know, I'm doing okay. I just want to go deeper. I, I just feel I want to go deeper. Then I'd say Romans, James, and First and Second Corinthians. This is all in your notes. I know there's a lot to remember. I'm getting down to the wire here. But if you're going through a particular tough time and you're just struggling, I would say Luke, Ephesians. There should be one more slide. There you go. Uh, Luke, Ephesians, Philippians, 1st and 2nd, Thessalonians. Those are the ones I would say. These are in your notes, so don't worry about it. But if you're going through a particular tough time, Luke, that's, he's the physician, talks a lot about healing in Luke. Ephesians, putting on the armor of God. Philippians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Okay? We there so far? All right. Getting down the wire here. The important thing about this is praying the word. When we pray the word, there is so much power in that, and there's a typo on that. But that means read and say with, uh, while I'm praying, wow, what was I trying to say there? While you're reading the word of God, you say it back to him. You declare it. You believe in the word of God. You trust in the word of God. You give thanks in the word of God. Be assured God's word will do what it says it will do. Amen? Okay. I'll give you some scripture. 1 John 5.14. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The key word there is his will. Right? The early church prayed to God in scripture. When the people prayed in Acts 4.24-30, they quoted Psalm 2. In Acts 24 to 30, it says, And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit. That's Old Testament. Old Testament prayers like Ezra's prayer, Nehemiah 9, 6 to 37, are repeating the biblical events that happened. Like, Lord, I know you parted the Red Sea, and I know you saved your people from the slavery in Egypt, and I know it's like declaring it, right? 
Jesus even prayed scripture on the cross, Psalm 22, 2, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here's a very important Bible, um, it's, a, it's not a Bible verse, but it's a quote by John Piper. It's about praying the word of God. This is really important. This, this is like what we're going to go to in this next section. Praying the word of God, right? Praying the word means reading or reciting the scripture in a spirit of prayer and letting the meaning of the verses become our prayer and inspire our thoughts, right? Example of praying the word can be found in the booklets. Next slide. I'm going to do some promotion here. Prayers that avail much. Now, I've got a bunch of them. But they're doing me no good sitting in the back. Right? I got a bunch. Hang on. Stay. Okay. So, what these are, these are Bible verses. And they put them in the form of prayer. So, they'll take a, a topic. Like, for example, there's one that's prayer for teens. That if there's a, it's not a book you read. It's like a toolkit. So, um, like for example, if you're trying, if you're a teen and you're like, there's some peer pressure or you're, you're trying to figure out, you know, how to control your tongue and talk right and not, not talk in a coarse manner. If you're wondering about salvation, if you're struggling with your parents or your family, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your future spouse, you want to pray for your future spouse. It, it takes all of those topics, puts it in a prayer form, and it's literally just like a paragraph or two. Um, like, for example, if you talk about self-esteem, you know, your identity in Christ, you go to self-esteem and says, Father, I come to your throne in order to receive help from my self-image. You created me in your image and likeness, which means so much to me. I know you will always love me. I know I'm created to be a marvelous work. I know you knitted me together. And it takes the word of God and puts it in a prayer. Right? These books are fabulous, but they're not doing me any good back there. So, praying the word of God is super important. This is your interactive part. Do you have any teens that think they need a better prayer life? Can you want to come up and grab this book? Or Rod, can you take it to her, please? Anybody else want these books if you're a teen? Back there, great. Back there. One over here. Beton courts. I got one more. Anybody else? Right there. Elijah. Yep, actually, I'll tell you what. Hang on. All right, so this is volume one, Prayers That Avail Much. It's basically for anyone. Anybody uh, as a parent wants to pray for your children? Right here. Any other parents? I don't care how old your kids are. They could be in their 20s or 30s. Give them back there, please. Yeah, I'll get some more parent stuff. I do. I'll get more parents. There's some in the back. There's some in that back room back there. Would you grab them? It says parents. I'll keep going. Anybody's known the Lord for less than six months or a year? I know you have. We talk about it all the time. All right. I've got some for new believers. Actually, here's what I would say. If anybody has a family member in your life and you're praying for their salvation, these are great prayers. So they're here. If anybody wants them, I'll leave them up here. Uh, okay, this is the part that's going to take some humbling. Oh, parents. Woohoo! You got one. I got one. Anybody else? Parent, parent, parent back there. Here, I got more here. New believers. Um, this takes the humbling part. I only got one of these. My suggestion is if you really want these, get them on Amazon or I'll buy some more. I'll put some up there on our bookshelf. The next week or so, I'll order more. I'll just load it up and you guys just grab them for free. If you want to make a donation, that's great. Just throw them. They're like four or five bucks. Men. Prayers that avail much for men. Anybody brave enough there? Oh, there you go. Okay. Can we give Nathan just some appreciation? Thank you. Okay. Um, I also have a bunch of books of John. They're on our bookshelf. There's some books of John for anybody who wants them. All right. If anybody is struggling, you don't have to say anything, obviously. But if any, I have two books, volume two and volume three, Prayers That Avail Much. I think I give you volume one. But if anybody just wants to improve their overall prayer life, there you go, Alma, and then whoever else raises their hand. 
God bless you guys, no problem. What better way than to share the word of God, right? They don't do me any good sitting on our bookshelves. I'm going to end with this in a minute. I know this may be difficult for somebody, but I really feel there's a person here. I really feel this. There's somebody here that's like, I need encouragement. I'm struggling for whatever it is. If anybody's brave enough to tell me, I'll tell you about this Bible in a minute. But can somebody raise their hand if anybody's really struggling and just needs the Word of God in their life more than ever before? Come here, real quick. Okay. When my house burned down, the, the Samaritan's Purse, I worked for Billy Graham, gave me that Bible. It is a Bible for people that are struggling. They just, they just need to go in that relationship deeper with the Lord like never before. Uh, just getting over certain things. You could have family issues. I don't care what it is. But there's a booklet in there about how to go deeper in your relationship with the Lord. There's some personal notes to me that are actually um, um, encouragement. What is encouragement? And there's, it's not exactly a study Bible, but almost every page has an encouraging word that highlights the word that goes deeper. It's a great Bible. I've got two of them, actually, because I had two houses burned down. But, um, but I, I use that one. Okay? I love you. Thank you. So um, I'm going to end with this. I know I went a little long, but... Um, I got books of John. I'm going to throw some more out here on the bookshelf when I'm done. There's nothing more powerful than the Word of God to restore, to renew, to save, to give us a purpose and a direction um, so we can know Jesus and turn our lives over to God and be saved. We can be free from sin, not be run over by the filth of this world. If you don't like what's going on in this world, we can change it by starting in our own homes, in our own lives. For what's happening in the world today in our culture and society, we have to know the Word of God and pray like never before. Any topic, any situation, any area in our lives, we need direction, information, and guidance. If you've got questions, God has answers. It's in His Word. If you read something or hear something that does not quite sit right with you, ask questions, get into a Bible study, ask your pastors, ask somebody you trust. If you're unsure if it's truth or not, go straight to the Bible. Shine the light on it, and God will reveal what is truth and what is a lie. And there's a lot of lies going on right in the world right now about people's identity, about what saves, about truth, about heaven, about people that follow Christ. Just as importantly, who and where are the people that will stand up for the truth? Who's going to stand up for the truth? It's got to be us. Amen? Give the Lord some praise. All right, so um, um, do I have a piano player here? Piano player? Anywhere? Oh, I do. <laughs> Yay, Nicole. By the way, that song today was like anointed, beautiful song. Loved it. God bless you, Nicole. Yay, Nicole. Uh, use these notes, please, this week. I mean, we got the new year coming up. What a better way to end the new year with uh, getting deeper into the word. And what a better way to start the new year than by being really uh, grounded and hitting 2024, you know, with, with the Word of God.